Let's rotate some stuff here inside of Photoshop. I'd like to step you through three examples. In this first one, what to do when an image opens up at an odd orientation like here. In the second example, how to rotate an individual layer within a Photoshop composition. And in our third example, well, what's going on just here? You'll have to wait to the end to find out. So, our first example, this is pretty simple. I've opened up a JPEG just here. It should be landscape, it's opening up as a portrait. Image, image rotation, basically one of these three options will generally sort you out. In this case, 90 degrees clockwise, our rotation, problem solved. Example number two. Now guys, again, we're going to be rotating individual layers within this composition, but I want to show you that command that I just used, image, image rotation. It does work on a file at a global level, but you can still apply it to a Photoshop file with layers. So if, for example, I did image rotation 90 degrees clockwise, that's the result just there. Again, not what we want, but just appreciate Photoshop files in their entirety can be rotated as well. So I'll just undo just there. Okay, notice my layers panel just here. Let's rotate this customer layer just here. There's the cafe layer, there's the customer layer. So with the customer layer selected, edit, transform, rotate. Now we can rotate this around, even move it around if we need to. I'm just going to escape to jump out of there because I'd like to show you what I think is a slightly better way to activate a similar command. So edit, free transform is what we're going to be chasing after. Remember we were in here a moment ago, transform, rotate. The reason I like free transform is because it can do everything the rotate option can, plus a few extra things should we need it. But the keyboard shortcut is really helpful just here. So that's command or control T. So let's jump into free transform just now. And you can see with our mouse outside of the layer content, I can easily rotate that around like so. I can easily grab it and move it around like so. And if I need to, I can easily go and grab a corner and resize it. Now that resizing option isn't available to us had we just chosen that rotation option. So if you need to cancel a transform, or in this case, a rotation, you can either press the escape key or just come up here and click the little Ghostbuster symbol for want of a better term just there. And if you want to actually commit it, press enter or return, or hit the tick mark just there. In this case, I'll hit escape to jump out. Okay, so again, remember that keyboard shortcut, command or control T, so I'll activate that just now. Now, if you want to rotate at very deliberate 15 degree increments, you can do so using the shift key. So if I come out here, you can see I can freely rotate like so, but if I hold down the shift key, it will actually snap in 15 degree increments. Also note guys, when I'm rotating, you can see the angle up here changing as well. So again, holding down the shift key, you can see that it's actually snapping to 15 degree increments. Now we saw that the angle was changing up here as well. So when I use the mouse to roll around, the rotation that is, it's changing up here, but we can also change the number directly up here as well. So the little rotate icon just here, we can actually click and drag on this, left and right, and it does move rather slowly. So if you want it to move more quickly, hold down the shift key. You can also click inside of this field. You could dial in a very specific number. So I might type in say 46 degrees, or with the cursor inside of there, you can press the up and down arrow keys to change that and hold the shift key down to change that slightly faster. Although again, I'll admit, still rather slow. Notice when we've been rotating this around guys, by default, it's been pivoting around the center of the layer. Now we're seeing this little reference point just here. There's a little check mark just up here. You can see when I hover over it, it says toggle reference point. So that is actually off by default. Now I'm gonna turn this back on and I want you to see there's a little grid just up here. Now if I click on the little square in the upper left corner, notice the reference point jumps to the upper left corner. And now when I rotate, it's actually rotating about the upper left corner. So for example, if I choose middle right, it's now rotating around this point just over here. We can even step this up a notch ourselves and actually define the reference point should we need to. So I'm actually just gonna grab the reference point and move it, for example, to the tip of her nose. So now if I rotate, you can see 
the layer content is indeed rotating around the tip of her nose. Maybe not the best example guys, but you get the idea. That could be particularly handy if for example you were trying to rotate the hands on a clock. There's another option that I'd like to point out, but it's highly unlikely that you will need to worry about this. It's this interpolation option just over here. Now by default it's set to bicubic, and bicubic automatic would be another fantastic option to use just in general. Now the reason I'm pointing this out is because if you've deliberately or accidentally somehow set this to nearest neighbor, when you're doing your rotations and actually committing them, if what you were expecting was, for example, a nice smooth line and you were getting something that looked rather jagged and not anti-aliased, you may have again accidentally set this to nearest neighbor. So leave this as bicubic, guys. You shouldn't have to worry about it. But if you're getting crunchy looking results, crunchy looking edges, just check you aren't using nearest neighbor. Again, guys, when we want to commit a transformation, just press enter or return or hit the tick mark. And we have now successfully rotated that layer around. So let's jump into our third example just here. What you're seeing is kind of an illusion. And what I mean by that is, we haven't actually rotated the image in any way. This is purely a display only property. So what are we looking at really here? Well, if I tap the R key, it jumps us to the rotate tool and you can actually find that tool under the hand tool just down here. Now with the rotate tool active, if I click and drag with my mouse, you can see I'm actually changing the angle of the Photoshop composition on screen. So why would you ever want to do this? Well, this could be particularly handy for artists who are drawing or maybe even if you're doing a bit of masking with the brush tool. I'll show you why. If I tap B to bring up the brush tool, you can see I'm just painting with black just here. I'll undo that. Now I'm using a mouse just now, so maybe not the best example, but if you were using, for example, a pressure sensitive tablet to do some drawing or some masking, you'll often find that when you're drawing lines, there's a particular orientation which is more comfortable to use than others. So for example, if I needed to continue this pattern down the bottom, this could be a little bit awkward to draw. So if I press the R key, jump into the rotate tool, if I rotate my canvas around, jump back to my brush tool, and now I find, I may find this a more comfortable way to continue drawing. A little advanced tip here for you guys. Notice I'm using the brush tool. I don't wanna have to tap the R key, rotate around, tap the B key to go back to the brush tool. There's a slightly faster way you can do this. So again, having pressed the B key, notice I'm using the brush tool. Instead of just tapping and releasing the R key, if I click and hold the R key, Notice it jumps me to the rotate tool. I'm going to rotate my canvas around. Now I'm going to release the R key and notice it jumps me back directly to the tool that I was using, which in this case was the brush tool. So again, using the brush tool guys, click and hold the R key. I can rotate around, release the R key. It returns me to whatever tool I was using, in this case, the brush tool. I'm actually going to tap the R key just now because I want to jump into the rotate tool and point out one last thing there guys. There's a reset view just up here. So if you've got yourself completely disorientated, just hit reset view and that will get you back to where we started. So that's it there guys. Hopefully everything you need to know about rotating things inside of Photoshop. I hope that helps. Catch you later.